Before the advent of radio and satellite navigation, pilots had to know how to get from point A to point B, using only the limited resources they had at their disposal. Those resources typically consisted of a chart, a magnetic compass, a clock, and the ground below them. Using just those tools, pilots could navigate thousands of miles and arrive at their destinations, on time and with little deviation from their intended route. They did this by using pilotage and dead reckoning. Even with the advanced navigation systems available today, pilots are still expected to know how to apply pilotage and dead reckoning skills any time they fly. Navigation signals can become unreliable, equipment can malfunction, and electrical power can be lost. It's for this reason all pilots need to know how to determine their position and navigate to their destination without using anything other than a chart, a magnetic compass, a clock, and visual checkpoints. In this lesson, we will discuss how pilotage and dead reckoning work and what you must do to successfully apply these skills in the airplane. Although the name implies it is only used by pilots, just about every person uses this technique to get from place to place. How many times has someone given you directions that sound similar to this? What y'all want to do is follow Derby Road till you cross the railroad tracks, and then make a ride at Sinclair Street. Continue till you get to the intersection where the big bank is, and then make a left on the Frontier Road. My house is the first house just past the pond on the left. By using street names and landmarks to help you navigate your way to the destination, they are essentially providing you all of the information you need to know to find their house. This is the most basic form of navigation there is. Pilots use the same technique to get where they want to go, but from a slightly different perspective. Pilots can't read street signs, but they can still use prominent landmarks and major roads to guide them where they are going. Armed with nothing more than a VFR sectional and clear skies below, a pilot should be able to navigate to any airport of their choice. Here's how it works. Let's say you want to fly from Daytona Beach to Gainesville. With just a current Jacksonville sectional, you should be able to take off from Daytona and fly to Gainesville without any other navigational aids. On the sectional, notice that there are restricted areas between Daytona Beach and Gainesville. Instead of flying through this area, you decide to fly around it. To do that, you determine that the best course would be to fly towards Palatka Larkin Airport and from there, head west. Keep in mind, the key to pilotage is selecting checkpoints that will be easy to see from the air. You'll also want to select checkpoints that are spaced out an appropriate distance from each other, so you can check your progress as you go. Selecting points that are too far apart could allow you to wander off course. If you are flying strictly by pilotage, you should be able to see the next checkpoint from the one preceding it. This way, you can visually transition from one point to the next as you fly along the route. Crescent Lake is a safe distance from the restricted areas, so you decide to use that as a checkpoint. Regardless of where you end up after ATC vectors you north of Daytona Beach, you will be able to see Crescent Lake and fly towards it. Following northwest along its eastern shoreline, you can pick up the tributary of the St. Johns River that feeds into the northernmost part of the lake. Following the tributary to where it joins the St. Johns River will put you due south of Palatka Larkin Airport. You should have no problem seeing the airport from that position. From there, you can pick up State Road 20 that travels west towards Gainesville. Following that road will eventually bring you to Noonan Lake, five miles southeast of Gainesville Regional. Although the course we chose was not as direct a route as possible, with only the help of a VFR sectional, it did serve its purpose and allowed us to navigate from point A to point B without getting lost. This type of navigation is as basic as it gets. Aviation, however, is never content with good enough, and pilotage alone is not enough to get us to our destination in the safest, most efficient, and reliable way possible. That is where dead reckoning comes in. 
combining pilotage and dead reckoning gives a pilot a way of knowing where they are and where they are going, and just as important, when they will get there. Dead reckoning provides the key component of time to the equation. Knowing how long it will take us to get somewhere is extremely important for a pilot, because an airplane only has so much before it runs out of fuel. Another bonus of using dead reckoning is that we can increase the precision of the course we fly. By planning our course in advance, we can fly more direct routes, which in turn allows us to get to our destination in a more fuel-efficient and faster manner. It also lets us know if something isn't going as planned, and could give us an early indication of a potential problem. So, what exactly is dead reckoning? Dead reckoning is the process of estimating your position by advancing a known position using course, speed, time, and distance traveled. In other words, if you know the course and the speed you are traveling, and then take your time over a certain checkpoint, you should be able to estimate your arrival time at your next checkpoint. All you need to know is the distance to that point. It also allows you to compare your pre-flight performance calculations to your actual in-flight performance. If you calculated that your ground speed would be 120 knots, but your dead reckoning shows that you are only going 100 knots, well, then you know something is different than what you planned for. Or, if you calculate that a particular heading, flown at the speed you are traveling, will have you arriving at your next checkpoint in 15 minutes, but find that it only took 13 minutes to get there, then you know the wind speed has changed from what you planned for. Dead reckoning will also let you know whether the heading you are flying is correct for the route you plan to travel. Your position in relation to the checkpoint can also provide more information about the wind. If you arrived at your checkpoint and find yourself left of course, then there is a good likelihood that the wind has shifted from what was forecast and requires a change of heading to hold your course. Using this new information will enable you to make a more accurate time estimate to your next checkpoint and allow you to better compensate for the wind. One other advantage of using dead reckoning for navigation purposes is that it will assist you in your pilotage tasks. It's not always easy to find prominent landmarks that you can see clearly from a great distance. By using dead reckoning, you have an estimate of when you will arrive at the next checkpoint, so you know when you should be looking closely for your point. When flying cross countries at Embry-Riddle, you will always use a navigation log. The nav log is designed to allow you to input your pre-flight planning for the flight, along with all of the checkpoints you plan on using. The performance calculations you come up with prior to the flight will provide estimated ground speeds and headings to fly to reach each checkpoint. Once in the air, you will use the nav log to verify your performance and modify your planned headings and power settings as necessary. The nav log requires the use of both pilotage and dead reckoning. You will use pilotage to keep track of where you are, and you will use dead reckoning to better estimate when you will get to where you are going. When used together, pilotage and dead reckoning allow you to fly your route as safely and efficiently as possible and will keep you thinking ahead of the airplane.